There we are. Hey, good morning. Good Thanks afternoon. Good morning, Dustin. How are you? I am well. How are you? Great. I'm I'm shaking visibly with nerves because I never you never know when uh um Zoom or Discord or something's gonna completely blow up and break. So it's it's the nature of doing business. So um, yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot, Connor and and Charles for for coming in and and Neil as well uh, to talk about uh, Youth and Ham Radio. We're going to kind of switch gears a bit to uh, the state of the hobby survey. Perfect my lower third and my the rest of my presentation. Zoom went, or OBS wants to snap the window. It's so annoying. All right. So Dustin, you are the uh, creator, the uh, proprietor, the the um, runner the survey runner, I guess, of the state of the hobby survey. Um, behind the scenes, you're the man doing all of the data analysis and, and, and number crunching and, and collecting all of the all of the responses from, from hams out there. So uh, oh, yeah. go ahead and uh, um, give us a little bit of information on that. Um, we really want to know how it started, how it came to be. Um, why, why isn't there surveys going on already? And, you know, why is this the one we really hear about? So... Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, probably because uh, I spend a fair amount of time just trying to promote the survey. So mm-hmm. let me uh, let me say thanks for having me on here. And uh, I, I had to laugh when you said that you were you were nervous. I've never been on YouTube before, so I guess maybe I'm I'm also uh, nervous about that. But hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna wing know. it here. It's Mike Freight. You get over it that's, eventually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. So the first thing I always like to start with is that I, I'm not a data scientist. Um, I like to tell people that right up front. One of the things that people say is, oh, it's a non-scientific, that's not double blind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's true. Um, I'm a senior analyst for a, a global med tech. I specialize in digital architecture. So I spend a fair amount of time uh, working with data and data models. So I, I have a little bit of understanding of, uh, of what I'm doing. This whole thing started uh, because I was browsing the amateur radio subreddit and I, I saw all these surveys, and they were really good surveys. Uh, they were about these really niche topics, and if they applied to me, I would take the survey. Uh, but I never saw any of the results, and that's something that I wanted to see. So I decided to make a broad survey, as broad as it can be in such a multifaceted hobby. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to make sure that the results were available to anyone in the community who wanted to use them. Uh, whether it's a YouTuber, a club, uh, anyone really, to, to use that information and, and try to do something actionable about that. Uh, so really the goal here is to spread awareness uh, uh, on topics within the community, within our community. Uh, it's to spark conversation between operators. And, and really it's to be a fun event every year that people can, can look forward to. I know, I know. I like giving my opinion on things, uh, and I hope others do too. So, so really, that's that's sort of how uh, the survey came to fruition. Oh, very cool. Um, what are some of the the main challenges? I, I, I heard you talk about the one of the main issues. You get a lot of feedback saying like this isn't a legit survey, but even then, me personally, it's provided. A, a wicked amount of value, especially in youth and ham radio. One of the things we need to know is, is there really a problem with, with the, the curve of age and ham radio? Do we expect to see like a drop off in the next 20 years or so? And, and your survey data is definitely showing us some eye opening. You know, you can see the, the, the curve of age of hams aging over time. And, and hopefully as this goes on, we'll start to see the youth start to open up. And, and one of the things that's been interesting is, is sharing those those results and one of the biases the natural biases you get out of it is where do you actually put the survey and i think um you've already told us that you've done a pretty diligent job at like posting this everywhere qrz reddit uh, young mm-hmm. hams yark yeah. etc cetera, etc cetera. so we try to get like a subsect of of all of that but what do you think is one of the largest challenges with with running this Really, um, I have um, I have three main challenges. Uh, really, when it comes to the survey, uh, the first is is getting it in front of as many people as possible, um, and and I'll talk a little bit here in a minute about uh, a, a large source of the data where I get a lot of, of hits from. Uh, the second part is convincing people to take the survey. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's grown over the years. It's kind of long. 
Um, I, you know, and, and I admit that it's sort of biased towards U.S. hams. Um, I'd like to fix that by working with hams in other parts of the world in the future. Um, so trying to convince people to take the survey that it's that they're going to be providing relevant information uh, is hard. And, you know, and the last thing is staying positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyone who's a creator uh, on YouTube or any platform knows that uh, there's there's a lot of uh, a backlash and vitriol and. Uh, when I release the survey, I tend to not even look at the threads. Yeah. Uh, I kind of, I kind of post them and just kind of let them go. Yep. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's hard. Uh, it's been a lot better this year. Uh, everyone has been very, uh, very nice, very kind. People have been human this year. That's last good. year was rough. Yeah, last year was really rough, but uh, uh, it's been great. So really, those are my three challenges. Uh, now, in terms of where I get a lot of this data from, uh, QRZ and Facebook really are king. Uh, they, they just have a large target audience and Facebook has a great mechanism for uh, sharing and, and letting that uh, mm-hmm. proliferate between the, the social media platform itself. Um, the Yark Discord, uh, which I, I've sort of met you through that and we've communicated there, uh, that's been a great source for uh, the next generation of operators, whether they are just entering into the hobby, whether they're just uh, or they're interested uh, it's a great source. I, I get a lot of uh, great feedback and, and data from from that group. Uh, this year, Reddit was great. Uh, years past, it's been tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mod team over there uh, has done a really great job this year of, of pinning the uh, the survey and uh, lots of results from there. And, and I think that uh, that has sort of not the next generation, but the generation after that, a great source of information from that group mm-hmm. that I'd love to have their their feedback. Uh, last year was the first year I made an appearance on YouTube, not me personally, but the survey. Uh, it was a ham radio crash course, Josh Nass and uh, Curtis at Everything Ham Radio. Uh, so that was fun. And uh, it was the first year it was on a podcast, the uh, guys over at the ICQ uh, podcast. And then uh, countless blogs, uh, ham radio blogs. Uh, I, I can't uh, thank everyone. It would it would take me forever. So, um, yep. You know, th- thank you to those people. Uh, I I couldn't even hope to do this without the help, so I, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, it it really gets a lot of eyes. I'm I'm always surprised at the how how many. Usually, it's in what the two thousand three thousand range of of responses. Yeah, uh, last year we had I think thirty seven hundred responses. Oh wow, which which pales in comparison to the amount of licensed uh, ham radio operators out there. So that's always my goal every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year we're doing fantastic. It's the end of the first week, and we have over three thousand already. So um, you know if this continues, uh, we're we're on on track to have maybe eleven thousand, fifteen thousand, which would be which would be fantastic. Yeah, not bad. And and hey Chad, if you haven't taken the survey by now, you should. Um they're posting the links in the chat, radio S O T H Sierra Oscar Tango Hotel dot org is the is the source of this survey. Um, yep, and, and on that site, you can find the previous year's results. Uh, there's one from 2017, 2018, 2019, and then when 2020 is done, I'll post that there. Uh, so if you have some time and you're interested, you can always go back and look at the previous year's results, and, and there really is some some fun and interesting things you can learn in there. Cool. Um, so let's talk about like some of the results you've seen. Um, like surprises, like things that are like, oh, you, di- I, I didn't expect that at all. Is there anything like that you've seen before? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are. In fact, you know, I have some slides here. I can, I can throw some of these up. Yeah. All right. Again, we're doing this live, right? So yeah. we're trying to There's work the. All, the, all the kinks are going to be shown right here. <laughs> yeah. So as we saw oh. earlier, but. Bear with us. And I got to move my stuff around, of course. All right. Looks good. Okay. So so the the slide that I actually – I threw this up here because I, I wanted to uh, to share it with you. Let me um, – uh, so I, I always like to start with this. I, I kind of throw this around. This is my enthusiasm about the survey in the course of a 12-month <laughs> period. And uh, as you can see, typically the survey window is mid-February through mid, uh, mid-April. mid And um, <laughs> what happens is uh, I have great enthusiasm. And then as soon as the survey drops, um, it's a downward spiral. Uh, and usually right around uh, April or May, I'm, I'm crying. Oh, uh, and, then, and then right around August, I suddenly get amnesia. 
and then I get really excited for it for the next year. And that sort of builds up until until it's released. So mm-hmm. I always like to share that. So we already talked a little bit about this, um, about the source. This is from 2019. And as you can see, most of them are from QRZ and, and Facebook, and I won't uh, rehash this. But really, this to me is the most uh, surprising thing. Uh, last year, I actually pulled uh, folks who were not yet licensed but interested, and I just asked them uh, some questions to kind of understand how I can help them, how we as a community can help them uh, along in their journey, whether it's to get licensed or once they're licensed, how to get active. And what's amazing to me is that less than a third were encouraged by a Elmer or a, a mentor. Hmm. Um, and uh that blows my mind yeah uh, i i just uh i can't imagine uh what what is driving uh that other uh 70 to to find this hobby and i think being able to tap into that is is going to be critical mm-hmm. i think a, a you know shout out for the youtubers out there that do ham radio i bet if you asked a question like where Maybe you did or not. We'll see. Um, but where did you learn about ham radio? Where did you get most of that information from? Um, a lot of it has been shifting over from like the traditional, you have an Elmer who educates you and basically raises you through the ham radio ranks. And now it's kind of turned to the internet, social media, and then obviously YouTube. Um, there's not a single person I know that is in ham radio that hasn't used YouTube as some sort of resource to learn about everything, anything you can think about. So... I bet Absolutely. that'll that'll take up a big chunk of of today's Elmer, if you will. So there's definitely yeah. a place for Elmers. We're not saying this means we need to stop Elmering and do more YouTube. There's Absolutely. there's obviously a connection we you know make as as people as long as there's no pandemic out there. <laughs> um, I mean, I actually ran used to try. I used to try. I used to run a um, contest. Uh, program called the youth contesting program and it's just barely like it, it's still a glimmer in my eye kind of the original first runs of it were pretty much a f- total flop and the idea was to link up contest stations and their owners with young operators and actually have them physically come to the station and get some elmering from the contester the own the station owner the station host um but in the 2020s and in the modern era that's starting to well it's not starting to it's already pretty much fully up um you know kind of is a thing of the past just knocking on your neighbor's door because there's a or because there's a ham radio antenna on the roof um obviously i do it yeah i mean i i still would do it but i think kids these days are are not inclined and not not just because the the kid themselves is you know scared or or um um, like me, just a different time. it's just a different time, different upbringing. Yeah. It seems weird to go to a stranger and say, Hey, I see antennas on your, on your car. Are you a ham? Um, and, and yeah. things like social media and chats and, and stuff, discord, um, discord are, are ushering in kind of the next generation. I think that's what absolutely. we're seeing from your, from your results, like right here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and tied to that is, is, uh, you know, I, I, myself, my grandfather is a, is a ham radio operator. And, uh, you know, I asked if any other members of their, uh, of their family are radio operators and only 14% said that they were, uh, and, you know, the rest of the data that I have shows that when other family members are, are hams, uh, an individual is typically licensed for longer and they're typically more active. So, uh, you know, having the, having that family tie is is important, and the mm-hmm. fact that that's so low to this next generation, uh, you know, is a, is a little bit concerning. So, right. you know, that was that was some of the uh, the things. Let's see, I have a couple others. Um, my my personal favorite is the HOA question, and I heard you mention that a little bit uh, when you were talking with the with Connor uh, and and Charles, I think his name was about mm-hmm. the, the the HOA situation. And and what's interesting to me is that uh, that I I feel like the data shows that it's it's more of a perception rather than a threat. So mm. uh, I typically ask, uh, what are some of the issues that are facing the hobby? And you can see that represented here by the blue bars. And HOAs is is the second most reported uh, issue. And uh, the orange bars here would be the largest perceived threat. And it's uh, it's not uh, first or second. I think it's maybe fourth. Uh, it's up there, so mm-hmm. it's it's high in terms of of an issue, 
and in terms in terms of the largest issue reported. Uh, but then I, I ask a little bit later on, have you been impacted by an HOA in regard to the hobby? And, and uh, you know, by and large, people have said no. You know, and, and I understand that there may be some people who, when they're looking for a home, they actively avoid one in an HOA. Uh, but it just seems uh, to have something that's rated so highly as a perceived threat, uh, but yet have an impact on so few uh, operators. Uh, you know, I think we should just take a look at that critically mm-hmm. and, and think with all the challenges that are facing uh, ham radio today, uh, do, do how much capital do we want to spend on fighting HOAs uh, with the legislature? There might be other areas uh, that, that that money and time is better spent. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's the whole point of the survey is to, to sort of get people talking. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, it, and and shout out to youth. One of your questions is is an issue facing the hobby young operators, old operators, and, and you have young <laughs> operators right there in the middle. <laughs> is it an issue to have young operators on? I'm wondering if there's like resent out there. Yeah, and that and that's why I ask those uh, every year. People comment like, well, they email me and they say, well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And my response is, well, what does that mean to you? Right. Uh, th- this question was designed to be. Uh, sort of a, a, a gut check. And uh, if I listed all the criteria for what constituted a young operator, uh, someone might not think that mm-hmm. it fits. I want it to, to come from come from their uh, their gut and see. Right. And, um, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, it, it really is that that and uh, and old operators, right? What does that exactly mean? Yeah. So is it like literally people who have old age, like, or is it right. curmudgeons and you know people who operate <laughs> yeah. on seventy two hundred or that sort of thing? Oh boy! You could put a whole question in there for seventy two hundred. I'm sure. I, I could. I want to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, and then I always get this every year is uh, you know it's called the state of the hobby survey. And uh, and people just uh, seem to, to really take offense to me calling it a hobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, so last year I asked, I said, hey, is it a hobby or a service or is it both? And uh, an overwhelming majority said it's both a hobby and a service. Uh, a little chunk there, uh, 15.5% said it's only a hobby. So so all told, at least 99% of people who responded think it's it's at least a hobby uh, and maybe has some, some service components. That's good. Because so. I've seen long debates on on whether whether or not this is a hobby or a service it, it's like it can't yes. be both to some people yes. um, but clearly i mean this is three 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 to four thousand um responders of hams all across the internet um saying it's it's a hobby and it's also a service so yeah yeah absolutely. and and maybe because it's called the state, state of, the of the hobby, hobby it's a little bias there's a little yeah, bias a little, poking in a little here. bias there but yeah. but either way i'm not getting a new url for the survey so uh <laughs> we're, just, we're just gonna put that to bed so right. yeah i could talk for uh, i could talk for hours here how are we doing on time here we are at 10 15 and so probably about five to ten more minutes we've got before um i start getting kicked off and we bring on uh, uh 741 so go ahead and talk for, for a few more slides and I'll kind of poke in some questions. And if chat, if you guys have any questions, uh, please post them in the chat and we'll try to get them out there if I if I catch it. It's hard to, you know, keep track of everything, but uh, bear with me. So go ahead. Perfect. Yeah, this is this is just some some fun slides here. Um, you know, I I have a, a desk that's full of HTs. I don't know about you, Sterling, yeah. but uh, I wanted to know how many on average, how many uh, HTs people had. And uh, it seems like uh, the the average uh, ham radio operator has three and a half, uh, whatever that means, uh, three and a half uh, HTs hanging out. And uh, I, I start to think of the pile that I have, and that's that's pretty uh, representative of what I have. I have maybe four, mm-hmm. so it's close to it. Um, you know, and then and then I ask about uh, spending. How much have you spent on on ham radio in the last twelve months, and how much do you? Would you like to spend? And uh, you know, it's it's interesting to see. Uh, you know, I, the average uh, spending was around sixteen hundred dollars. Um, so, you know, it's there's there is an industry out there. Um, maybe not as much as some others, but uh, you know, it exists. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So I, I'll spend the last couple of minutes here just kind of talking about uh, uh, sort of uh, what the what the future looks like, and uh, and what people can do. And uh, if you see any questions from your your audience, just uh, feel free to cut in, and 
I'll try to answer the best I can. All right, let me take a look. First of all, I want to shout out to all of my subscribers because it looks like to me, if I post this up here and I put this to this screen and I minimize this, 2,000 subscribers. I think we hit it. Um, so thanks you, thank you guys so much. I never would have thought that this would have hit this point. I I can only see more growth from here. So uh, I really appreciate that. That's that's a heck of a number. Um, so anyway. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's get back to figuring out which thing is right. Any questions in the chat? Uh, looking for question marks. It looks like there's just a lot of discussion regarding um, HOAs, antennas. It, it's been a, HOAs have been a, a, a boon for stealth antenna design. Um, I personally definitely did not pick a house in an HOA, but I also shot myself in the foot because I have nine houses within the near field of 40 meters. And so, and, and a transformer that's just probably arcing on the inside. So the noise is crazy, but you know, um, I did see one of your questions was, is one of the, what are the, one of the issues is RFI. And I think that's number two, right? Like the, the RFI question, cause yeah, let's go back and take a look here. Definitely can, uh... something being talked about. Yeah, so it looks like Number RFI three. from ex external sources. Yeah, that's the that was the the third uh, largest or the third most reported issue. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I agree. I've got one on eighty meters around here too. I can't uh, can't use eighty meters to save my soul. So yeah, we'll yeah. definitely feel that. Yeah. So and and then looking at this, the operator base uh, aging out. We'll kind of like wrap it all back around into the youth kind of uh, perspective. I'm kind of throwing this out. Uh, thrown out there so uh, it seems like the largest issue from all of your um, uh, participants is that we fear that the current operator base the current hams are at the point where in the next x number of years and, and we're trying to determine what that x is from your survey data um, because in fact if you try to ping the fcc and get their data they don't have data on birth dates for all the hams and if even you tried to like work out a thing with the social security service and get ages and it would just be a nightmare and it probably wouldn't even be able to you know um, happen so this is the best data we have um, to make decisions in the hobby and i'm sure people all the way up like irau level arrl level are probably looking at this too and thinking oh uh, we didn't know this was such a problem or or maybe they already knew because they have their own surveys but who knows um it's just that this yeah. data is very useful and it's public and it, I mean, it really helps i think for the entire ham radio community um and especially for me seeing oh everyone is afraid of the operator base aging out that's going to ruin or or um, be a big issue for the hobby down the line what can we do to bring in the next generation, bring in more hams. They don't have to be young hams. They can be retirees and for, you know, forty somethings, twenty somethings, um, young professionals, mid mid. Everyone, you know, everyone can get into ham radio. Uh, it's definitely not. Uh, we definitely don't discriminate. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've always said that, you know, communication is a, is a core component of, of amateur radio and, you know, and, and without others to, to communicate with, we're, we're really just talking to ourselves and, and how many years down the road before um, that happens. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a, there's a lot of other impact that people don't think about when you, when you look at that, that uh, the operator base aging out, uh, you know, at some point, uh, radio manufacturers like ICOM and Yesu and Kenwood, um, it's just not going to be worth their time to, to create commercially available gear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it, right now there's, um, you know, a large base of, of folks, not all, but some who are, are older and who are retired and, and maybe have a little extra money to throw at the hobby. Uh, but if that base dwindles, how long before those, those manufacturers, uh, uh, you know, exit that market? Um, at some point, it's just not going to be worth it for them. Right. So, you know, the, these are these are the long uh, lasting impacts of, of the the health of the hobby, why it's so important for us to do everything we can to to make sure it's healthy and increase that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there, there's many others as well. Uh, one that people know quite a bit is the loss of spectrum. Right. If the if the operate if the if the uh, the hobby base keeps shrinking, it's going to be a, a heck of a lot easier for uh, the FCC to start uh, taking some of that spectrum and giving it out. So yeah, you know, all very important things that we need to kind of keep our eyes on. Yeah, it's super important. Um, so let's kind of close it out. We got a few more minutes left before I uh, I get seven four one the the mic and 
um, when he talks about, let's see, he's going to be talking about SDR play and used gear buying tips. So stay tuned for that. Um, kind of a closing uh, question is, is what does the future of the survey look like? Is it kind of stay like this? Is it growing? How can we help you, like, I don't know, add questions, improve the quality of the data, that sort of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, well, each year I like to improve the survey just a little bit. Uh, I'm not trying to boil the ocean, but just a little bit. Um, you know, like uh, 2017 was really rough draft, uh, very short survey, not very well put together. Uh, 2018 was the uh, first year that I actually modeled the results into a data model, um, and that was that was helpful to me. Uh, 2019 was the first year that I pulled those who aren't yet licensed or who would like to be licensed. Uh, and then this is the first year that the survey is anonymous, so you don't have to provide your call sign if you don't want to. I'd like to move to a more robust survey platform. Mm -hmm. uh, Google's is free. Uh, but it's very limited. Uh, so with that comes uh, the need to maybe do some fundraising. So you might see that in the future. And, uh, you know, if you find it useful and like to donate, that would be great. Uh, just follow my blog for more details on that. Um, I'm going to keep running it uh, as long as that amnesia keeps hitting me in the fall. Uh, I'll, keep, I'll keep running it. And as long as people enjoy taking the survey and, and find uh, it useful, I'll keep doing it. And in terms of how you can help me, uh, first and foremost, uh, participate in the survey every year. It's annual, so don't feel like take it once and then you're done. Uh, take it every year. Uh, so that's that's going to be uh, the first. And, and the second is to share it. Uh, share it with all your radioactive peers, everyone that you know. Uh, email it. Talk about it in your clubs, on nets, on Discord, on social media. Just help me try to get this out to as many people as possible. Um, and then lastly, and, and this is this is a big one to me, is talk about this survey. Talk about the results with your clubs, with your friends, on your Discord channels, on your YouTube channels. Um, talk about what you what you agree with. Talk about what you don't agree with. Um, trying to move that needle is going to be so important for the health of the hobby today uh, and in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really going to be uh, that's going to be key to keep the the hobby thriving. Um, if you want to help me, if there's a question that you'd like to see on the survey and you haven't taken it this year, take the survey. There's a section at the very end that says, "Hey, what do you want to see next year?" And throw your question in there. I've I've taken a look at some of these already, just prematurely, and there has been fantastic questions that people have suggested that I will be using. So uh, that's going to be your uh, your best way to to do that or get a hold of me. Send me an email. Hit me up on Discord. Um, however you'd like to do that, I'm I'm happy to chat with people. Very cool. Yeah. So. Um, this has been a great pleasure. Uh, the data is always eye-opening every year. Um, and like he, like you said, keep taking the survey. Don't just take it once and be done um, because your things change. Like even your, your not just your age, but your interests and, and all that stuff changes uh, all the time. Me personally, I go from, you know, being into HF and contesting and then I go to being into ham festing and maybe VHF stuff. So it's really interesting to see these trends change over time. And so that's why you got to keep on taking it. It's it's really quick and easy. I've looked at the chat and it seems like maybe 10, 15, 20 people. I saw Bob K6 UDA took it. So you got one from him. That's awesome. All right. Um, 384 people in here now. We're going to start switching over to 741 here in a minute. So I want to say thanks a lot, Dustin, for coming on and, and sharing this Thank really eye-opening information. Um, we hope to have you on next year, and I hope to see you on the on the Hamvention, um, you know, uh, forum roster. I'm sure. Um, yeah, that'd be that'll, great. That'll be really cool to to see, you know, the trends and the updates and all that stuff. So. I would love that. Thanks again for having me yeah. and, and for uh, for helping run this uh, this event, great event, and look forward to it. So thanks again, and thanks to everyone to, from taking the survey as well. All right, 73. See you, Dustin. 73.